Did you ever hear of a doctor who learned how to treat diabetes, not from their training nor from medical school, but from one of their patients? Today, we'll learn about just such a doctor. This morning, while I was exercising on my elliptical trainer, I was watching an interview on YouTube with Dr. Brett Schur interviewing an Indian doctor named Dr. Roshani Sangani. This lady is an endocrinologist who practices in Mumbai, India. She went to medical school and received her training in the U.S., where she learned virtually nothing about carbohydrate restriction as a treatment for diabetes. Now, that is a sad state of affairs, given that treating diabetics is a major part of the medical practice of most endocrinologists. Yet, Dr. Roshani was only told about the nature of diabetes and how it can never get better. It will always get worse and worse as diabetics age. She told Dr. Brett Schur, I don't think that being a doctor means you're qualified in nutrition. And sadly, that is usually the case. She was trained about the various meds to use with diabetes and when it is time to start using insulin, but nothing about lifestyle intervention. And armed with that knowledge, she went back to Mumbai, India, set up her practice, and began treating diabetics. She did what she was trained to do. She gave diabetics first one medication and then another and then another, and finally, at what she deemed was the proper time, she started them on insulin injections. She didn't see people improve their diabetes, but that was okay because she never expected that. If she could give them enough meds or meds plus insulin and get their glucose levels lower than they would be otherwise, well, she was content. And she felt she was fulfilling her mission as an endocrinologist. But after several years of practicing in Mumbai, she came across an unusual patient. He'd been referred to her by his regular doctor, and although he did obediently take the meds she prescribed, when his blood sugar rose sky high with an A1C of 16, she told him it was time to take insulin. But she was surprised when he told her that this was something he was simply unwilling to do. He said he'd do anything else, he would take whatever meds she would prescribe, but he would not, under any circumstances, take insulin. She wondered, what am I supposed to do? Prescribing insulin was something she was good at, but beyond that, she was clueless. Out of desperation, she asked him about his eating habits. He told her what he ate and told her he always enjoyed four chapatis, which is an Indian flatbread, at every meal. She thought to herself, if I cannot get this man to take insulin, maybe reducing his wheat intake will help a little. So she asked him, you're taking four meds and eating four chapatis every day and your diabetes is sky high. You think you could reduce your chapatis? He said, okay, I'll do that. He came back a few days later and his blood sugar had dropped from being in the 350 range down into the 180 range, just by going from four chapatis per meal to two. That was his only change. Now, if she had prescribed insulin and saw those results, she would have been ecstatic and would have assumed the insulin was really, really working well. But in this case, these amazing results, which happened over just a few days, were clearly as a result of dropping those two chapatis per meal, or six per day, from his diet. Her patient also got excited, and he said to her, I'm going to drop down to one chapati per meal, but I want you to reduce my medication. Now, she was nervous about that. She had assumed that with an A1C of 16, his pancreas was certainly dead. But still, he had gone from glucose of 350 down to 180 in a few days, so surely his pancreas must not be all that dead. And sure enough, he continued to see success in lowering his glucose levels. And this doctor, this trained endocrinologist, learned a lesson from a stubborn Indian man in Mumbai that she had never learned in all of her studies in her medical schooling and training in Chicago. And the lesson was this. 
Cutting carbohydrates is incredibly powerful, and it can sometimes work lightning fast. And this was the beginning of the transformation of Dr. Roshani Sangani from a traditional endocrinologist into a low-carb endocrinologist. A few years later, she learned about Dr. Jason Fung and the Diet Doctor podcast and website, and she became more and more confident in recommending a low-carb diet to her diabetic patients. And now she's known throughout Mumbai as the unconventional diabetic doctor. She's pragmatic enough to know she cannot change patients overnight, and she will rarely tell them just cut out all your carbs in your diet, down to almost nothing. She does share how that if a patient says he's eating two pieces of toast and a couple of eggs, she'll ask, well, how about one piece of toast and three eggs? Her goal with her diabetic patients these days is not to give them more and more medications as they get worse and worse, but rather to get her patients into a non-diabetic blood sugar range and reduce their meds to nothing when possible. She encourages her patients to take a fasting C-peptide test because usually that shows that their pancreas is not burned out. She says, I can tell them your pancreas is making insulin. So you don't have high blood sugar because your body's not making insulin. It's because you're eating so much food. Talking about eating and snacking, eating and snacking. In other words, grazing all day long. Then she recommends intermittent fasting and no snacking. Well, some things are the same all over the world, aren't they? Whether you live in India or Africa or Mexico or China or Davenport, Iowa, if you have diabetes... All those carbs you've been eating have done a number on you, as has your practice of grazing and snacking from morning until bedtime. And whether you're an Indian that needs to give up the chapatis or an American that needs to give up pizza or a Mexican that needs to cool it on the tortillas, our epidemic of diabetes makes it clear that an excess of sugar and processed carbs are wreaking havoc upon us all. The good news is when you change your eating habits and start eating more natural foods and lower carb foods, and when you make some simple substitutions for the foods you love and you feel you cannot live without, once you do make those substitutions, your raging diabetes doesn't rage so much anymore. In fact, often, I think I could say almost always, you can get your glucose levels down into the non-diabetic range and prevent all the miserable complications that come when we let our blood sugar get out of control. You can enjoy your life again. Without the specter of looming kidney failure, blindness, heart disease, strokes, neuropathy, constant infections, amputations, and so many other nasty things that come to uncontrolled diabetics. Life is good again. We only get one life in this world. Why not make it a healthy one? Remember, I have one other YouTube channel. It's called by my name, Dennis Pollock, and it features short little devotional studies related to the Bible. I cover all kinds of topics which will help you understand the Bible and the ways of God. I believe you'll be encouraged, helped, and blessed by watching these devotionals. A link to this channel is in the description.